Hi, welcome to a vinyasa style yoga class. My name is Kaylee. When you're ready, we're going to get started today on the back. So you can go ahead and lie all the way down onto your back. When you get there, it might feel good to bring your knees into your chest and to just slowly circle the knees around and rock side to side or really move around in any way that feels good for the lower back. And then we'll meet up in a tree pose on the back. So left leg is going to go long. You can bring the sole of the right foot anywhere on the inside of the left leg and then do whatever feels most comfortable with your arms. If you feel like you need a little connection, like me, maybe you are just rolling your mat out from being in the middle of something else, it might be helpful to bring your palms somewhere on your torso, just to feel that connection between your hands and your body. If you feel a little tight in the shoulders or the chest, it might also feel nice to cactus the arms out by your side or reach them over your head in some other arrangement that really lets you breathe a little bit deeper into your chest. Once you find this supine tree pose, just let yourself melt into the shape for a moment. Connect with your breath and you can start to breathe a little bit deeper, letting the inhales really fill you up, expand the belly and the chest. And using the exhales to soften and to let the body start to melt here. And stay in this tree shape, but go ahead and reach the arms back up over your head and catch your left wrist or elbow with your right hand. So arms are resting, shoulders are resting. You're going to start to tilt the head and the shoulders over to the right, and then maybe you drag your left heel over to the right. So you're creating like a crescent shape with the left side of your body. If it feels good, you can keep your nose pointing straight up or nod your chin over toward your right shoulder. And then just take a couple breaths into the left side of your body using your mind's eye to trace the outer edge of your body from your foot all the way up to your fingertips. You're ready to start to take that side stretch out of the tree pose, bringing your shoulders back to center, bringing your knees together on the, bringing your feet wide and bringing the knees together here in a little broken bridge shape. Let the low back release. And then we'll set up in that tree stretch on the other side. So keep the leg neutral. Keep the right leg long as you bring the left foot in. And maybe you try a different arm variation on this side of the body. Feel into the gentle opening, or maybe it feels like a pretty intense stretch in the left hip and inner thigh. But also notice if there's sensations in your right leg or the lower back, or really anywhere else in your body. You can stay in this version of your supine tree or add that side stretch, reaching the arms back, catching the right wrist, walking the head and the shoulders over to the left, walking the right leg over to the left a bit. If you can create a sense of spaciousness, breathing a little bit bigger into the right side of your lungs, letting that stretch expand into the right side waist and hip. And then eventually come back through the center if you added your side bend, feet down about hips distance apart, bring your arms down by your side, no, knees are pointing upward, and then this time turn your palms to face down. 
Keep your hips down for a moment, but press the palms and the elbows into the floor. So your arms will probably be out a little bit away from the body, but see if you can feel into the back as it lights up. Then squeeze your glutes gently, tuck the tailbone and lift the hips. So we're using the whole back side of the body instead of just the glutes in this bridge. There's not a right or a wrong here. If you prefer a glute bridge, totally take that instead. If you're with me here, we're really activating the whole posterior chain, the lats alongside your spine and behind your ribs, the glutes, as well as the back of the thighs. You stay here or lift your heels to activate your calves as well. And then we can just tap the heels down and lift them right back up. Little tap and lift here for five, four, soft jaw, three, two, one, lower all the way down, bring your knees into your chest. And then start to rock forward and backward, just a couple passes along the length of your spine. Maybe you find your balance on your sit bones or even on your shoulder blades before you're ready to rock yourself into a tabletop position. You cross the ankles, plant the hands, and then bring the knees back. Walk yourself back onto your mat if you're way far forward like I am. Let's come into a cow. Tilt the tailbone up toward the ceiling. Let your chest pull gently through the arms. The chin lifts. Staying cow, but tuck the toes under so you're opening up through the soles of your feet. The plantar fascia getting stretched here. Take a big breath in. Cat pose, untuck your toes, round your spine, pull your belly button to your lower back, stay in your cat, and then just nod the chin side to side or front to back. You can even open the mouth and move the hinges of your jaw around if you're holding a lot of tension there. Then come back to cow, tuck the toes under, take a big breath in. And then cat, come out to the tops of the feet as you exhale, press the hands down, chin tucks toward the chest. Two more times, moving with your breath, inhale, cow. And exhale into your cat, round your spine. Once more, breathe in. Breathe out. Come into a neutral spine, tuck the toes under. Spread your fingers wide, really press them out away. Pull your belly button to your lower back and then just lift the knees a centimeter. So just lift a centimeter, shift the shoulders forward and shift them back a little bit. So really loading the wrist, just kind of testing the water there. Notice how that feels. And keep your knees right where they are. You're just shifting forward and backward. You can drop the knees at any point if you'd like. We're just here for three. We're gonna find down dog in two and one. Press into the mat, lift the hips. Take a few deep breaths in your first down dog. You can pedal out your knees, maybe let your hips swag side to side or give your head another gentle shake or a nod. From your downward facing dog, bring your big toes together back behind you and then lift the right leg up. Put a bend in your right knee airing out through your right hip, and then draw a few circles with your right knee in one direction. Just finding some space in the right hip, switch the direction of those knee circles that you're making. And then kick the right leg back, take a big breath in. Step both of your feet to the top of the mat, leave a little space between the feet. Find a halfway stretch, but wing your arms by your side. Pull the shoulder blades down. And then go ahead and rotate the entire length of your arm, the full length of your arm here. See if you can feel that movement of your shoulder. So it's a little bit kind of funky to find at first, but really move as much as you can through the shoulder without pain. So find a path of movement that's not painful, but that's maybe waking up some little different, little different spots in your muscles and your nervous system for three. For two, interlace your hands on one, find a forward fold, let the head drop. It feel good to straighten one leg out and put a big bend in the other knee. Maybe try that out on one side, switch sides. Keep your heels down, but gently shift your weight toward the toes. Feel the hips lift. 
and then release your hands. Find a halfway stretch with the fingers either in line with the toes here or the palms on the shins. Bring some awareness to the low belly and see if you can create some space in the lower back by drawing your navel to your backbone. Big breath in. Plant the hands as you exhale, step to a tabletop position, so knees drop down. Cow pose, breathe in, lift the chest and the chin. Cat pose on the exhale, round your spine, press the mat away. Toes are tucked under, come through neutral, and then hover the knees for five. If you want, you rock forward and backward. Four, three, down dog in two, and one. Lift the hips, drop the head. All right, left leg goes back, take a big breath in, and then bend your left knee, find some opening through the hip. And then draw a few circles in one direction, starting to stir up some of that synovial fluid in the joint, switch the direction of that circle. And then we'll re-extend left leg on an in-breath. Step both of your feet to the top of the mat, a little closer together this time. Halfway stretch, either palms to shins, fingers in line with the toes, or wing the arms as you breathe in. Fold forward as you exhale, catch the calves, drop the chin, let the head go. Slowly unroll all the way up to standing. So you've had the head down for a while here. It might be good to take your time. Reach your arms up, draw in a long inhale, and then pull your hands to your heart. Let your eyes soften onto the tips of the fingers or close your eyes all the way down. If there's anything that you need from your practice, you can call it to mind right here. You need a little bit of strength, a little bit of patience, a little bit of grace, whatever it is that you're looking for today. Use your practice as an opportunity to find it within yourself. Big inhale, breathing that in. Open mouth, exhale, offering it up. Blink your eyes open when you're ready and reach the arms up. And then bow forward as you exhale. Maybe you catch the calves, the palms could press into the mat by your feet. Halfway stretch, take a big breath in. Plant the hands, step back to a high push up this time and shift forward and backward. So, same thing here. You always have the option to hold in a plank or to drop the knees down. We'll go to a low push up in three. Two, one, shift forward, chaturanga on the exhale. Keep pulling the chest forward. Upward facing dog, flip onto the tops of the feet. You're straighten out the arms, pull the belly button toward the space in front of you. And then downward facing dog, send your hips up and back. Take a big cleansing breath in through your nose. Anytime you want, you open your mouth and sigh it out, release some tension. Lift the heels as you take a big breath in. Empty your breath and then step, walk, or hop your feet to the top of the mat. Find your halfway stretch, inhale. Hold forward and exhale. Rise all the way up, nice and smooth, breathe in. And then go right back down as you empty out. Halfway stretch, inhale deeply. Plant the hands, step back, high plank to low plank on the exhale. Cobra or upward facing dog, inhale, stretch. Downward facing dog, press into your hands as you exhale your hips back. Stay here, take a big breath in. And a breath out. This time, hold your exhale, look forward, lift the heels. Step or maybe you hop your feet between your thumbs. Halfway stretch from there, that's where we breathe in. Fold forward and empty out. All the way up on the in-breath, reach. Right back down on the exhale, really smooth. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Plant the hands, step or hop it back to Chaturanga. Upward dog, inhale, pull your heart through. Downward facing dog, exhale, press the hips back. Stay here, set the eyes to one spot, breathe in. And breathe out. 
Hold the exhale, look forward, step block or hop feet to the top. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Chest to thighs, empty it out. And roll all the way up on the in breath. And then this time, catch your left wrist with your right hand. Find a side bend as you take that left arm up and over. You can stay here or lift your left foot. Bring the left foot back behind the right foot out to the right. And then start to bend your right knee as you straighten the left leg and press the left heel down. Lengthen out through the low back here. So you're finding a kind of sideways lunge, an off-center lunge. We're going to come back to the center, both feet underneath your hips. Inhale, reach up. And then switch. Catch right wrist, draw up and over to the left. Stay here or root down through the left foot. Right foot's going to cross back behind the left all the way off of the mat. And then press that right foot down as you bend the left knee. Bring space in the low back, space in the right side body. Breathe in as you come back to the center. And then bow forward on the breath out. We're going to add something on in here. Take crow pose, halfway lift, or high plank. Crow pose, halfway lift, or high push up. We'll use this as an option through the vinyasa. So it's not a long hold. Wherever you are, breathe in. And then vinyasa through, the next place we meet is downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, right leg lifts on an in-breath. And then step the right foot forward, coming into warrior one as you spin the left heel down. Reach the arms up. And today we're not going to hold these stretches for a ton of time. So see if you can come right into that spot where you feel like, yeah, you're trying, but you're not gripping, you're not forcing. The Yoga Sutras only talk about the asana one time, and it's just to briefly say stira sukham asanam, which means strength as well as ease in all of these poses. Take a big breath in, plant the hands, step back, high plank to low plank or straight to downward facing dog. Inhale. And we meet in down dog on the exhale. Left leg lifts, breathe in. Step forward, find warrior one on this side. As you inhale, everything from the belly button up just opens and expands and reaches. As you exhale, everything from the belly button down, the hips, the legs, the feet, roots down a little bit deeper into your mat. This union of opposites, some ease and expansion in the upper body, supported by that steadiness and strength in the lower body. Take a big breath in, plant the hands, step it back, high to low push up. Inhale, up dog, or you've skipped that and you're in downward facing dog, which is where we all meet up. Take a breath in. And a breath out. We're going to put that little flow together. Lift the heels, look forward, empty your breath, and then step walk or hop to the top. Halfway lift, breathe in. Chest to thighs, exhale. All the way up on the inhale, big stretch. Catch left wrist, go right just for the exhale. You can add that offset lunge if you like. Back to the center, big in breath. Switch sides as you empty. And go back to the center, inhale, maybe you look up, and then fold forward with the exhale, chest to thighs. Halfway stretch, breathe in, plant the hands, however you want to get to downward facing dog. Inhaling up, and exhaling back, right leg high, breathe in. Step forward just for the breath out. Steady, rise to warrior one. Take a full inhale as you reach. Plant the hands, step back and flow through your vinyasa. Keep the breath as steady as you can as you weave the prana of the breath through like a thread through the whole practice. Left leg, inhale it up. Exhale it through. Warrior one, big breath in. Plant the hands, step back, and flow. We'll meet at the top of the mat, so no rush to get there. 
When you do get to the top of the mat, find a chair pose with the feet about hips distance apart and the knees in line with the toes and the ankles. So you can take a peek down and just make sure that your knees aren't knocking in nor caving out. So you want legs totally parallel if possible. And find some space in the back again. So notice if you're arching your spine, can you hug the floating ribs in, pull the belly button in. Just here, taking a few more deep breaths. Nice long inhale. We're gonna stand all the way up straight legs, drop the arms to the sides as you exhale. Back to chair, just for a breath in. Fold forward and empty out. Crow, halfway lift or high plank. Take a big breath in. Chaturanga on the breath out. Inhale up. And exhale down. Right leg goes high, breathe in. Big step forward as you empty, warrior one. Finish your inhale, we're gonna add on. Lightning warrior this time, wing the arms by your side. Find some length in your spine. And then hug that right hip bone back in place. From warrior one, or excuse me, from our lightning lunge here, we're gonna arrowhead the arms to the space in front of you. So trying to keep the arms in line with the rest of the spine, finding one long line of energy from your back heel all the way forward. Breathe in. And then we've got a Shiva squat with winged arms. Bring that left knee to your right calf. Winging the arms by your side or variation that I might pick today. His hands down underneath the shoulders, maybe on fingertips, maybe on blocks. Maybe you're near enough to a piece of furniture that you can use for some support here. From our dancing Shiva, excuse me, from our Shiva squat, we're gonna step that left foot back. I am operating on very little sleep today. Straighten the right leg out as you reach the arms up. The little mini bend in your back knee. So we're setting up for a pyramid variation. Inhale as you reach up. And then exhale as you bring your hands behind you, catching opposite elbows. Let's stay here, pull that left hip forward a little bit, take a big breath in, and then hinge forward as you empty. You can pause with the chest parallel, or you can fold all the way forward over that right leg, let the head drop. From pyramid pose, we're gonna release the bind if you have it. Come back to the Shiva squat and then catch your left foot with your right hand. So you've got a bind between that left foot and right hand here. We're gonna root down into the right foot as you come all the way up into a variation of dancer, our awkward dancer pose. Let the hips rest gently forward for a big quad stretch. And then if and when you like, you can start to kick into that right hand with your left foot and reach the left arm forward. Steadiness as well as ease. Where in your body can you find some steadiness? Where can you find some ease? Can you soften the jaw, the sides of the neck? We're gonna slowly bring this left leg in front of you. Finding a single-legged mountain, reach the arms up and breathe in. Figure four, bring that left ankle over the top of the right thigh as you hinge your hips back. Where in your body can you find some ease? What little adjustments can you make here, maybe in the wrists to find a little bit of space? We're gonna find dancing Shiva for real by catching the outer edge of the left foot or the left knee with the right hand and then rise it up, take that leg out if you prefer and extend the left arm back. You can always be holding the crook of the left knee here. Find length in your spine so tailbone is dropping downward, out of the head reaches up. From dancing Shiva, Slowly release that leg, lever the left leg back behind you. We'll find revolved half moon. Left hand's gonna come down 
maybe to the mat, maybe to some blocks, maybe to a piece of furniture. As you reach the right arm up, squeeze the inner thighs gently toward each other, and then start to rotate your chest toward the right. And from this revolved half moon, we're going to step the ball of the left foot to the back of the mat, come up into an open arm crescent twist. Chest comes up over your hips. Reach your left arm up toward the ceiling, and then start to slowly lower your left knee all the way down to your mat. Breathe in. When you're ready, find half Hanuman or full Hanumanasana, straightening out that front leg. Recollecting the breath. We'll be here for just about three more rounds of breath. Maybe you close your eyes and really tune into the sensation of the stretch and the movement of your breath. And here, one more full in breath. And an exhale and start to walk the hands forward, re-bend the right knee, tuck the left set of toes under, lift the left knee, and then just go straight to high push-up for chaturanga. Cobra or up dog, breathing in. Downward facing dog, press the hips back. We'll try that on the left side. Inhale, lift the left leg high. Exhale, step the left foot forward, find warrior one, reach the arms up and breathe in. Lightning warrior, hinge the hips back, wing the arms by your side. And then just really commit to being here for yourself, however you're showing up. So sometimes we have like 110% to give and Awesome, you can bring it. And other days, maybe we have more like 60% or even lower, and that's fine. Give what you've got. And just keep showing up for yourself. Reach the arms forward, finding that arrowhead shape, this power lunge. Big, long in-breath. Shiva squat with winged arms, bringing the right knee to the left calf. You know, absolutely take a version where your fingers are down and give yourself just a little bit more connection to create that steadiness and stability. From this Shiva squat, we're going to step the right foot back and then rise up with straight legs. Inhale, reach the arms up. Maybe you've got a little bend in that back knee. And then exhale, drape the arms by your side. Catch opposite elbows. Take a breath in to prepare as you lift the chest and lengthen the spine, and then hinge forward to your pyramid variation. Now you can keep the chest about halfway lifted. Sometimes you feel more of a hamstring stretch there, or you can drop all the way down, bringing your chest toward your left thigh, letting the head drop, letting the neck release. From our pyramid variation, release the bind, take it back to a Shiva squat, and then rise up to that single legged balance, reaching the arms up, big long in breath. Figure four, cross right ankle over the top of the left thigh, send the hips back. I'm going to catch the knife edge of the right foot with the left hand or somewhere on the right leg. As you peel that right arm open, extend the right leg back for your dancing Shiva. If you can stack the shoulders over your hips, pull your belly toward your backbone so you've got more space in the spine for that rotation. You stay here, or if you feel pretty balanced, you can take your eyeballs back toward your right thumb. From our dancing Shiva, we're going to slowly lever that right leg back in space so that you can turn it into revolved half moon, cartwheeling the right fingertips down, lifting the left arm up and open, really twirling your chest toward the left side of the space. Stay here, take a big breath in, and then stay as you wrap the lungs around your heart, then slowly drop the ball of the right foot to the back of the mat and rise it up into an open arm crescent twist. 
from open arm crescent twist, right arm comes up, left hand comes down as you start to slowly lower that back right knee to the mat. Big long inhale, maybe you add a bit of a back bend. And then Hanumanasana, your version of this hamstring stretch. Nice deep breaths here. Set the eyes or close them down. And just tune into the sensations in the back of the left leg or wherever you feel sensation in your body. Breathe right toward where you feel the deepest sensation of stretch. Now start to re-bend the front knee, walk the hands forward, high push-up position. Take one nice long breath in, lower half or all the way down on the breath out. Cobra or upward dog, inhale. And then downward facing dog as you empty out. Stay here, let's clear that out. Big breath in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Lift the heels, look forward. Empty your breath, step walk or hop to the top of the neck. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Chest to thighs, exhale. Rise all the way up on the in-breath. Catch left wrist, go right. As you exhale, maybe you add that awkward side lunge. Take it back to the center, breathe in. Catch right, go left as you breathe out. Come back to the center on the inhale. Wing your arms, lightning chair as you exhale. Chair pose, take a breath in, reach forward, sink the hips back. And then fold forward as you exhale. Crow, high plank, or halfway lift just for a long in-breath. Plant the hands if you haven't and jump back or float through. We'll meet in downward facing dog. We're gonna put that sequence together. Right leg goes high, breathe in. Big step forward as you empty out. Warrior one, come all the way up on the in-breath. Lightning warrior, pull the fingertips back on the X. Power lunge, reach forward, breathe in. Shiva squat, maybe you wing the arms as you empty out. Drop the ball of your left foot back, rise up, drop the left heel, inhale, arms up. And then exhale, float the arms behind you. Catch the opposite elbows, or you can take reverse namaste with prayer hands, breathe in. And then hinge forward with or without that bind for pyramid pose. Take a nice long in breath. And stay for the exhale. Release the bind. Find that Shiva squat again, breathe in. And then rise it up, single legged mountain. Pause and inhale as you reach a little higher through the fingers. Figure four, exhale, bring that left foot to the right thigh. Catch the left foot or leg, left arm back, inhale, and then slow motion, take it to revolve half moon. See how steady you can make this transition. Once you get there, breathe in and twirl open toward the right, and then steady drop the left foot to the back of the mat, open arm crescent, inhale. Bring the left arm up as you exhale and slowly lower the left knee. Stay there, take a big breath in. And then Hanumanasana, stretching back through the right leg. Right away, walk the hands forward. Tuck the left toes under, we're gonna add on. Keep the right knee bent. Let's take this into a wild thing, bringing the ball of the right foot back behind you and then lifting up through the hips. You can stay here or if it feels like you're pulling way far back, see if you can shift forward a little bit so that the left shoulder blade actually comes onto the back of the ribs so you're plugging that shoulder into its socket. Nice deep inhale, core engages as you chaturanga yourself or not, but we'll meet in downward facing dog. This might be my last chaturanga of the day. From downward facing dog, left leg lifts, breathe in. Step forward as you empty. Warrior one, inhale. Lightning as you exhale. Power lunge, breathe in. Shiva squat, breath out. Drop the ball of the foot and then the whole foot as you reach the arms up, inhale, straight legs. 
Exhale, sweep the hands behind you. Either catch opposite elbows or reverse namaste, breathe in. And then fold forward for a pyramid. Just moving nice and smooth today. Release the bind back to Shiva squat on an in breath. And then rise it up strong, single legged mountain. Stay here, reach, lift the knee, lift the arms, breathe in. Figure four as you breathe out. Catch right leg, open to the right on an in breath. And then revolved half moon, taking your time, like you're moving through maybe like cold maple syrup. <laughs> when you're ready, drop the ball of the right foot back, open arm crescent twist. Right arm comes up, right knee drops down, breathe in. Panimanasana, just for that breath out. So maybe you don't press back quite as far with the hips. Pull forward, tuck back, toes under. Wild thing, lift the right knee, bring the left foot back behind you. Pressing down through those points of contact with the ground to peel the hips open, to stretch across the chest as you inhale. And then vinyasa, we'll meet in downward facing dog. Breathing in, breathing out. Look forward, lift the heels, step walk or hop to the top. Halfway stretch, breath in. Chest to thighs as you exhale. Rise all the way up and breathe in. Catch left, go right as you breathe out. Center, inhale. Catch right, go left, exhale. Back to center, breathe in. Lightning chair, wing the arms. Chair pose on an inhale. Hold forward and empty crow, halfway stretch or half or high plank, breathe in. And then vinyasa, we'll all meet in downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, lift the right leg and then bend the right knee again. Stay here or flip your dog. So right foot's gonna come down off of your mat somewhere to the left, and then maybe you pick that right arm up. Similar to wild thing, shift forward a little bit so that that left shoulder is on the back of your ribs, breathe in. And then we're gonna flip it all the way back over as you exhale, right leg kicks back, breath in. Step forward and empty out, warrior one, inhale. Lightning warrior, sweep it back. Power lunge, breathe in. Shiva squat, breath out. This time goes straight to that single legged mountain. Inhale, reach up, lift the left knee. Exhale, figure four, and pause. In your figure four, you can stay right here, or you have the option to bring left elbow to the left foot. Left elbow might be a lot to ask for some of our arms, so you can also just bring somewhere on the outside of that left forearm or even outside of the left palm to the left foot. Once you've got somewhere on left arm and left foot connected, open up your right arm, finding a twist. So you could have that elbow really pressing in. We're gonna slowly turn whatever version of a twist or figure four you're in, into that dancing Shiva, catching the left foot, Ooh, opening up. The wobbles are part of the practice, you know, really gentle with yourself today if you're feeling a little wobbly like me. All right, revolved half moon, inhale, chest lifts to the right, and then slow motion, open arm, twist to the right. Revolved crescent, big breath in, left arm comes up, and then slowly lower that back knee all the way down. Half Hanumanasana, breathing in. Pull forward as you empty out. Kick right back to three-legged dog, inhale. And then open your hips, stay or flip your dog. So yes, we're still on the right side. Breathe in. Option to come back through a high push-up, bringing your right knee to your left elbow and then shooting it off to the left. Both hands stay down where you cover that left leg. We're gonna come back to three-legged dog and maybe to flip dog, inhale. Go back and forth between these two shapes if you'd like. Left hand stays down through this whole thing. 
You could also be hanging out in three-legged dog with the right knee bent, drawing some circles with the right ankle. Woo. Last time, flip dog, breath in, and then vinyasa your way through to downward facing dog. Inhale. Press back on the exhale, left leg lifts, breathe in, bend the left knee, stay here or flip it. So this first flip dog, feel into the stretch and then bring that left hand down, spin the chest to face the mat, left knee toward the right elbow, keep the right hand down as you kick that leg out to the right. Shoulders are stacking over your wrist. Back to flip dog, if you choose, big breath in. Use the exhale to plant the left hand, shoot left leg to the right. Inhale, three-legged dog. Two more times like this, if you want, exhale, shoot the leg to the right. One more time, breathe in. Breathe out. Flip dog on the in-breath, and then release the hand down, three-legged dog, breath in. Step forward as you empty, warrior one, inhale, arms reach, lightning warrior, exhale, power lunge, breathe in, Shiva squat, breath out, single legged mountain on that inhale, figure four and pause. It's a great place to stay and really work into the outer edge of the right hip and thigh, or you start to twist toward that right foot, which is on your left, and then bring the right elbow or somewhere on that right arm to the sole of the right foot. Left arm spins open. One more breath in. If you're in the twist, stay and wrap your lungs around your heart. And back to the center. Let's touch the right foot with the left hand for dancing Shiva, opening up toward the right. And then revolve half moon, cartwheeling the right hand down as that left arm opens. Breathe in. Take a step back, open arm crescent. Revolve crescent on the inhale, lower the back knee. Hanumanasana on the exhale. Start to shift forward. We're going to come back to that three legged dog as you breathe in. And then flip dog as you breathe out. I feel like we did this already on this side. Yes, inhale. And then let's just find a high push up to a forearm plank. High push up to forearm plank. Press down through the elbows. Relax through the neck and the jaw. Pull your belly button toward your lower back. And breathe. Maybe you set the eyes to one spot. Maybe you close them all the way down. And can you find spaces in your body that feel strong? and spaces in your body that feel some degree of ease here, even if it's just like your earlobe or something. We're just here for five. Unclench your teeth for four, three, two, and one. Lower the hips all the way down. Stack your hands to make a little pillow for your forehead. I'll turn my head off to one side, but if it feels good to you to bring your forehead straight down to keep the neck neutral, do it. And then start to scan through your body. So we all have these habits of where we hold tension, these areas in the body that get tight or constricted when we're stressed. See if you can just be so, so interested in the sensations of your body and breathe into areas that do feel a little bit tight. Notice if it's possible to soften around your wrists or your ankles, even the soles of your feet. And if your head is turned off to one direction, go ahead and switch sides. Just to give your neck and your shoulders a chance to feel balanced here. And so much of this practice is just about meeting ourselves where we are. And using the resources that we have 
around us and inside of us in ways that feel skillful. And making space for our humanness. When you're ready, find Sphinx pose coming up onto the forearms with the elbows relatively close to um, beneath the shoulders. You can also catch your opposite bicep just to kind of test that spacing out here. And then for today, release the arms in front of you and turn the palms to face upright. Separate your feet maybe a little bit wider than your hips and then just roll the heels side to side. Feel the legs move around side to side, the hips move around. And close your eyes down and find stillness. And bring your awareness to the palms of your hands. And just feel almost like a sense how you would hold like a, a little baby bird or something or a newborn puppy. Newborn puppy might be the wrong thing that really spur me. <laughs> but just a softness. Can you cultivate a sense of softness in the palms, let the fingertips naturally curl? It's possible to keep the eyes soft or even closed. And stay here, but lift the chin upward as you take a breath in, like you're carving a line up with your nose. And then drop the chin down as you breathe out, keeping the rest of the body relatively in the same position. Do that again. Inhale, lift the chin, open the throat. And exhale, chin drops down toward your chest. And bring your head through neutral here. And then drop your right ear toward your right shoulder. Take a big breath in to the left side of your neck. Slowly bring your chin to your chest as you exhale, maybe nod the head gently side to side. Head comes through neutral, breathe in, nose pointing straight forward. And then left ear, left shoulder as you exhale, stay here, take a deep breath in to the sensation in the right side of the neck and the jaw. And then chin to chest as you exhale. Bring your nose right back through the middle, pause in neutral, finish that in breath. And then slowly release into a child's pose. Take your time. Your knees could be wide or they could be narrow. Whatever feels best is great. And you might keep the arms extended or it might feel good to drape the arms down by the sides of your body so that your fingertips are close to your feet. From a child's pose, start to walk your hands back towards your knees. And then stay on the tops of the feet, but start to walk the fingers all the way back. So we're going to stretch here. You can tuck the tailbone under, maybe lift the hips, pressing into the shins and the tops of the feet and the palms of the hands. Big opening for those hip flexors that are often bent all day while we're working away at our desks. Breathe into it, and then lower the hips down as you exhale. Walk the hands forward. Bring your hands right outside of the knees. We're still on the toenail side of the feet. We're going to try and lift up through the hips and then lift up through the knees, curling into a tight little ball here, tight, tight, tight little ball. Lower the knees until they're just hovering above the mat, and then lift all the way back up. Good, four more times, slow, controlled, squeeze through your abdominals to lift. Lower lift for three, Whew. Lower lift for two, lower lift, last one. If you've got a little bit more in the tank, try and lift your right heel toward your butt. And then if you lifted the right heel toward your butt, lift the left heel toward your butt. Bring the right foot down first. <laughs> and then drop both of your feet slowly, lower the knees. Sit back onto your heels, bring your hands in front of you, interlace the fingers, and then roll out through your wrists. Good, breathe in, breathe out. Switch the direction if you can of that figure eight. My brain always fights me a little bit on this one, a lot of it actually. So if it's fighting you too much, just release the hands and roll out through the wrists. Reach the arms up over your head. Stand tall onto your knees and your shins. Breathe in. 
Bend your elbows as you exhale. We're gonna stand right back up, inhale, lower the hips down, reach the arms up. Exhale, stand up tall on the knees, pull the elbows to the sides of your body, like a W shape here. Do that two more times. Inhale, hips down, arms up. Exhale, bend the elbows, lift the chest. Once more, breathe in. Breathe out, stay here. Bring your arms to your sides for a moment and then bring your hands to your lower back. Lift the shoulders up toward the ears, take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, lower the shoulders down and slide back into your camel pose, pressing your hips forward. And stay here or catch the heels. And see if you can find a version of this stretch that actually feels like you can breathe deeply into. If it feels like the breath gets really shallow or stuck in your throat, back off a little bit or come all the way out of camel and then come back in to a version to a degree that you can breathe. Glutes are active. Tailbone is gently tucked. Pubic bone is pulling towards your belly button. Bring your hands back to your hips and then guide your hips to your heels. Bring your palms face up on your thighs and then close the eyes down or soften your gaze to somewhere right past the tip of your nose. Nice deep breaths here. Every inhale, really lengthening up through the spine without forcing it, just feeling that natural upward current of prana. Every exhale, maybe you sit back a little bit further, send the shoulders back in space. From here, blink the eyes open when you're ready. You take your time to work your way onto your back, hugging the knees into the chest, very much like how we started. And then hug behind your knees, separate the knees a little bit here, clasp behind the knees, pull the knees into the chest, tuck your chin, curl up here. So hug, 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 hug. And then release, let the feet drop down, let the knees rest against one another. This time bring your knees into your chest, and then if it feels good, you're gonna reach around the shins, chin to chest, catch the opposite elbows, same curling into a tight little ball. But if you can, press the hip creases toward the top of the mat as you continue to tuck the chin to the chest. It's almost like you're trying to bring your nose or your temples to your knees here. And squeeze it in nice and tight wherever you are breathing. And then Shavasana when you're ready. If there's any other kind of cool down stretches that you need or that your body's craving, you feel free to add those in. And if you're in Shavasana, just let your body melt at the scalp and the muscles in the back of the neck and the shoulders release into the mat underneath you. Let the legs get heavy. Giving yourself this pause, this opportunity to really soak up all of the effort of your practice. Maybe reinforce for your heart, your mind, your spirit, this sukha as well, this sweetness this softness, this ease. Life is a function of both and of applying right, our effort as well as our ease. And stay here, just listen for my voice to close our practice together shortly. When you're ready to 
come off of your mat. You can start to bring some gentle movement, nod the head side to side. Circle your ankles, curl your toes. Zip up the legs today, point the toes, and then extend the arms back over your head. Big, long body stretch. Breathe in. Open mouth, exhale. Take your time to meet me in a seat. Land, bringing your hands to your heart in Anjali Mudra. And then just thanking yourself for taking care of your mind and your body and your soul in this way. And bring your thumbs to your forehead. Gentle bow of the chin to the chest. Namaste. Great to have you take care of yourself and I hope to see you soon.